Lawrence Krauss, and welcome to Science Matters. This will be the last episode of Science Matters for a while because what we're going to do in the Origins Project Foundation is I'm going to start doing a once a month live Q&A about science. And I'll be doing that on our Patreon channel. So subscribers to Patreon will be able to uh, log in and, uh, and ask me questions in real time once a month about any aspect of science. And we're going to try that. Uh, so this will be the last of the YouTube uh, science matters that we will do for the foundation. And I didn't want to just uh, end with that kind of uh, announcement, so I thought I'd do one one little bit of science matters explanation today. And it involves actually something that uh, that was asked to me uh, by someone on Facebook or Twitter, I can't remember. They wanted to ask me about the statement I made that the universe isn't really necessarily fine-tuned. There's been a lot of discussion about fine-tuning in the universe, and I've written about it, um, and it comes from the fact that the energy of empty space, the value of the energy of empty space is so small compared to anything we would calculate from first principles based on our knowledge of science right now, that the, an argument has been made, uh, called the anthropic argument, that suggests that the energy of empty space is what it is, because if it were any larger, then life wouldn't have formed. And therefore, the universe, the, the, the value for the energy of empty space is about 120 orders of magnitude smaller than we might have naively calculated. And therefore, an average, if, if you just had energies of empty space at random, you might expect the value to be much larger than what we see. And people have said, well, you know, the universe is fine-tuned. Somehow, the energy of empty space is fine-tuned to be so small that life, that galaxies can form, and then stars can form, and then planets can form, and we can form. And that, that's true, and that, but that suggests that we are in the optimal universe for life. And I guess one of, what I want to point out is that from a fundamental physics perspective, a much more natural value for the energy of empty space would be zero. That's what we always thought it was, because that you can imagine some symmetry of nature making the energy of empty space zero. But what would make it so small, we can't imagine. But what I want to point out is that if the energy of empty space were zero, a more natural number. In fact, the universe would be a much better place for life in the long term. And, it, and instead of showing slides, I thought I'd back, go back to doing what I did with my five minute vid, uh, videos that I've done myself, um, not with Science Matters, but I, I, I've drawn some, some things here. So let me, let me just uh, show you here. Um, here's the universe. Uh, as, as, as the universe expands, then the energy of matter if, if, if you have a uniform background density of matter, it'll fall as one over the cube of the, of the size of the universe, because as the universe gets bigger and bigger and bigger, then the, the distance between point masses will grow, and, and density is one over r cubed. So the density of matter falls as one over r cubed. And the strange thing about the density of empty space, the energy density of empty space, which seems to dominate the universe today, is that then it remains constant. It remains constant over time. So what that means is, initially at early times, uh, as the universe was evolving, that if, if that en em energy of empty space was there and constant, it was irrelevant. But at some point in the history of the universe, it will suddenly take over because it remains constant, whereas the energy density of normal matter falls off. Now, normal matter is gravitationally attractive. So if you have a lump of normal matter, it'll collapse. The strange thing about the energy of empty space is it's gravitationally repulsive. So it causes the, it's causing the, on larger scales, the universe to expand ever, ever faster and faster. Now, at that point where, where the energy of empty space takes over, the expansion of the universe changes from slowing down, as it would when it was dominated by matter, to speeding up when it's dominated by the energy of empty space. But that affects the formation of galaxies and, uh, in the universe, because if you think about this time A, when the energy density of matter on average is bigger than the energy density of empty space, if we go over here, take a lump of matter, and a lump of matter is so big that its size is, 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 is equal to the speed of light times the age of the universe. And since nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, no, no signal can travel on a scale larger than this. Okay, so that means if this lump of matter was there at earlier times, it didn't even know it was a lump because light couldn't have traveled across it. But at the time the, the universe becomes old enough for light to have traveled across it, it knows it's a lump, and if it's a lump of matter, it'll want to start collapsing. 
it'll want to start decouple from the background expansion and slowly collapse. And that eventually will lead to the formation of galaxies and clusters and stars, etc. Now, there is this small repulsion due to the energy of empty space, but because the energy density of empty space at early times is small compared to the energy density of matter, this repulsion doesn't, doesn't count for much, so structure forms. But at late times, when the... Um, when the energy density of empty space dominates over the energy density of matter, if a lump is large enough to suddenly just come in the horizon, as we say, to suddenly know it's a lump, because it's because the universe is now old enough for light to have traveled across it, the repulsive, uh, uh, basically repulsive force felt by the energy density of empty space dominates over the attractive force due to the matter in that region, and that region will no longer collapse. It'll no longer collapse. So it, it, for all scales larger than a certain size, structure will stop forming in the universe. And in fact, that happens at this, at this uh, time, uh, which in our universe was about when the universe was about 5 billion years old. So all structures bigger than the size of about what are current superclusters, any lumps of matter larger than that won't be collapsing, eventually fragmenting to form galaxies and clusters because... Um, there, basically, the matter on uh, on those large scales is being carried away faster by the energy of empty space than it can be drawn in by uh, uh, the attractive force of, of gravity. And it's even worse than that. If we think of quantum mechanics, it turns out that lumps of all different densities can form, and it's and it's what's called a, a you know sort of a Gaussian distribution. Basically, most most regions have the average density, but uh, but there are a few regions that have a density much bigger than average, and, 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 and it, you get this bell-shaped curve. Now, if you think about it, um, regions that have a density much bigger than average when they come inside the horizon will collapse more quickly to form galaxies, and the first galaxies to form will have the largest, uh, what we call, over-densities. And then later on, regions that have very small over-densities will eventually be able to collapse. But you see, if the universe is dominated by the energy of empty space, then these regions with very small over densities, even on scale sizes smaller than, 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 this, than this horizon size at the time the energy density of empty space takes over, these small regions which would require a long time to basically decouple from the expansion don't decouple on a time scale short enough so that by the time they, they would have otherwise begun to collapse, the energy density of empty space has taken over and their density is not sufficiently large to overcome that. So fewer galaxies will form, even on smaller scales, in a universe with, with a finite, what we call finite energy of empty space. Only if, if, if you, you have the energy of empty space going to zero, will more and more structure continue to grow on larger and larger scales over time. Over time, the universe will continue to generate structure, and that means it will continue to, to, matter will continue to collapse, galaxies will continue to form, clusters will form, galaxies will form, stars will form, etc. So, in fact, we do not live in, if you want to think about it, in the optimal universe for the long-term uh, production of life in the universe. In no way, if we wanted to really fine-tune our universe, um, you might make the energy density of empty space zero, but that's not the case. So for all those people who somehow think that we live in a, a universe which is the best universe for life to live in, and therefore there has to be some intelligent being designing it, that's not the case. There are much more, much more attractive universes that are compatible in the long term to life. And so even though we don't understand the energy of empty space, even though that number is very small, and hopefully we'll understand why that number is very small, it doesn't point to any design. Uh, it doesn't point to the fact that the universe was created for life in any way. And um, I think maybe that's a good way to end um, this science matters, because uh, science matters. And knowing about things about whether the universe is designed for us is something that should affect the way we then behave. And uh, so it's been a pleasure to do over the last year these Science Matters episodes for you. And I look forward to answering your questions on Patreon once a month. And we'll announce on, on our website and I'll tweet about when the next one will be. Take care. 